What's going on guys? It's Mac from Crypto, And today I decided to make the long awaited video regarding Dogami and the rarity attributes. I'm gonna explain everything for you guys. I feel like a lot of people are lost when they go to object.com. They're like, what the hell do I buy? What is rarity? What are these diamonds? What are these gold bronze things above their head? What does that actually mean for me as a player? And I believe the white paper does a pretty good job of explaining it, but it's not that easy to get to on the website. It's, it's you have to scroll all the way to the bottom and go to the white paper. And a lot of people don't like to read. They just like to lead. I was elected to lead, not to read. As usual, if you like this channel and you want to hear more amazing blockchain gaming tutorials and information, please be sure to subscribe and hit that notifications bell below. It really helps the channel reach a greater audience. And I really appreciate it when you do that as well. Let's go ahead and jump right into the Dogami white paper. We have a lot to talk about today. And I want first, I want to go ahead and touch on sort of what Dogami is. Background information for anybody who hasn't looked into it much. So the dogs of Dogami have come to earth. They brought their love and need humans for affection. We will take their paws into our homes. We will feed them, care them, train them, and breed them. All right, so I'm not going to read the rest of that, but you get the point. It seems a lot like a Tomagotchi game on the blockchain. Very exciting. They're planning to do an AR release of this, so you can kind of feed your dog with AR. It's, it's like a very much evolved version of Tomagotchi, but with breeding and a little bit more longevity, I think, in your pet. I'm very bullish on Dogami. Sadly, I didn't get any diamonds, but I did find out that I got a few gold rarity levels that were actually within the silver tier. So I'm going to go ahead and talk about how that works now. Let's go ahead and jump right into the features of a Dogami. So in Dogami, there is rarity tiers. The rarity tiers, as I've talked about before, are bronze, silver, gold, and diamond. The overall rarity score of your Dogami, which is part of your Dogami score, is not only determined by the rarity tier, but also by his fur color, eye color, personality, and generation. So you need to understand that just because it's diamond, doesn't mean it's that expensive. And if you look at the white paper, you realize that, that, that a lot of golds can have some of the same attributes and the same rarity level as diamonds have. They just don't have the little diamond above their head. So a lot of people are paying a lot for these diamonds when in actuality, if you read the white paper, it's quite possible that a lot of the golds are more expensive than the diamonds themselves. Let's go ahead and uh, jump into that later in this video. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and talk about sort of the different uh, classes first and the personalities. Dogami personality, they have all these different personalities. You just need to realize there's gonna be a lot of mini games in the future. So if you wanna just choose what mini games you wanna play, try and choose a dog that is strong in some of these different characteristics for some of these games. So if you want to be a show dog, make sure that you get dogs that have a really nice fashionista uh, rarity trait because then that can enhance your chances of winning during a doggy, you know, model walk-off or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if they do that, but I'm, I'm willing to guess there's going to be something like that in the future. Let's go ahead and jump over here to the Dogami score. The, the Dogami score is, a, a lot of people think it's the diamond, bronze, uh, silver, and gold, but it's actually a mixture of that and their rarity score. So that goes into the rarity score. If you're a diamond, you're much more likely to have a higher rarity score, but you can still be gold and have a high rarity score. And I'll show you how that works on the next page here. It also goes by stats score, which compares the dog stats with those of the rest of the population. These are stats, and I believe these stats come out uh, during the adult phase. I don't believe we have stats now. I'm kind of confused looking at these right now. So yes, the stat score, this doesn't come out until you start getting attributes, which happens in the adult phase. And this is determined by your rarity level of your different attributes, sort of uh, attributes as a puppy. But I'll explain that later in the episode. The third thing that really determines your Dogami score is the bonding level. Okay, so the bonding level describes the player's overall level of progression and bond with his or her Dogami. So it's one th third of it is kind of work. Uh, one third of it is, I think the, the stat score really comes in uh, with the rarity as well. So the rarity and the stats kind of blend in together. We'll kind of read it more into that later and you'll kind of get a better picture of this. Let's go ahead and jump into rarity score. So this is one thing I think a lot of people miss when they first jump into Dogami. They see this uh, diamond tier and they see this gold tier and they see this silver tier and they see this bronze tier. And what you don't realize is a lot of the bronze tiers actually overlap with the rarity score of the silver tier. So you can check that out here, for example. I have my Dogami pet. This is a toy poodle and it's black. It has a rarity score of 73, you can see down here. And that's a pretty high rarity score for a Doga dog, right? 
and you go back to this page and you can see a 74 is right up here. That's actually in the gold tier level. So yeah, I just delisted that dog. I had him listed for a silver tier level, but now I realized after reading this, he's actually really high up there on the silver tier level, which means he's much closer to the gold tier level, which means you can you can charge a bit more for them, right? Basically this rarity score is what determines, I'm just gonna skip ahead just for a little bit because I think it's important to talk about that now is when you go ahead and when you become an adult is assigned five new body attributes. The rarity score determines the body attributes later in the game. A Dogami with a higher rarity score will have a larger probability of drawing rare attributes. That doesn't mean it that a low rarity score cannot become a higher attribute guy. I mean, you could get 10 bronzes right now for the price people are paying for one diamond, and it, there's a high chance that you could get a legendary attribute on one of those bronzes that become an adult. There's still a chance of that happening. So a lot of people are aping into the diamonds, and I think that's good, but it's not necessarily the... There's many tactics to go ahead and play this Dogami game, right? It looks like body attributes are passed off to offspring during breeding. However, mutations are also possible. So what I'm guessing by these attributes is that... When you get a legendary attribute, it kind of, you breed it to make a puppy. And then the puppy, the attributes aren't revealed, but it has a higher chance of getting that legendary attribute if its parents had that legendary attribute. And just so you guys know, what's up with the attributes is they have a better sort of boosted rare abilities that they can use in the mini games. So let's go ahead and take a look at the impact of body attributes. A body attribute gives you special abilities and thus works as a booster on specific stat for a specific type of activity. For example, a Dogami can have a booster of 10 on his vitality for all hunting activities. That means when you send your your dog on a hunting activity, like maybe like that frisbee game, like the I don't know that duck hunt game or whatever. I'm guessing something like that will have will be like a vitality will be boosted by your vitality uh, attribute. Just kind of use your imagination and connect it to other games in the past and you can kind of see, I think, where they're moving along with this idea. I'm not saying they're going to copy the games, but saying it's a good it's a good way to kind of get an image of what's happening, I think. Otherwise, you're just kind of lost in the sauce. Okay, let's go ahead and look at bonding level and because this also has a very, very big effect on what Doga rewards you can get. A really important part of this game is also to go ahead and bond with your dog. Looking at the Dogami score, you can see here one third of your Dogami score is your bonding level. So it's very important to go ahead and bond with your dog because this increases the amount of rewards you can get. The higher bonding level, the higher your potential reward. So adult bonding goes a little bit differently. There's a multiplier effect instead of just sort of kind of stating what the potential reward is, you actually get a multiplier effect depending on the level of your bonding with your dog. And I believe your bonding level of your dog as a child also affects the bonding level of your dog as an adult. Basically how these daily rewards are gonna accumulate with the Doga coins is you're going to have daily tasks that you're gonna to have to complete. And as you complete those daily tasks, the task bar is gonna slowly fill up and then you can claim rewards at the end of the day. So even if you don't do any tasks, you still get some of the, the rewards, but you don't kind of level up your dog over time and you don't get the full amount of rewards for that dog. So even if you go ahead and rent out the dog and the rental system is 50-50, your, your rentee and renter both get 50% of the rewards. However, your dog is a lot happier, which gives you a lot more future potential as well. So it definitely gives you an advantage to go ahead and rent out your dog rather than just keeping him and taking in the Doga rewards. I think that is the end of today's episode. I'm not going to go into the Dogami life cycle. I'll go ahead and save that for another day. If you have any comments or questions, please leave them below. And I will see you guys all in the next episode. I hope that helped you guys get a clear image of what the rarity levels are and what you guys should look for when you guys are shopping on object.com or Rarible or the Dogami Marketplace. Y'all stay safe and have a great day. Peace out. Bro, we need to pop it. Everybody, go to Twitter and the hashtag the things. Pump it. You know, pump it real good. We need a good pump. Everybody deserves a nice Tezos pump.